Morning everybody, welcome to the ARC Online. It's really good to see you this morning, uh, even if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. Shall we all give each other a wave? Hello everybody, good to see you. Now, I wonder if you've sometimes promised to do something, maybe sort a problem out or do something you've been asked to do, and you need to show your mum and your dad, show a friend that you really have done it. I'm going to give you an example, okay? So, so a friend of mine is in a house where the floor in the hall looked like this. Can you imagine the problem it was getting in through the door? Can you imagine the problem it was trying to find the right pair of shoes? And it was difficult for visitors. Anyway, my friend said it was all sorted out and a very super duper helpful person helped and then he sent me this photo. So not only did he sort the problem out, but he sent me the evidence. He showed me, I could see with my own eyes that it was fantastically, completely sorted out. Isn't that great? Now, later on, Anne's going to show us from, from the Bible with our true story today, something a little bit like that. Now, can you remember what book of the Bible we're in? That's right, here we are, it's in Exodus. The second book of the Bible. And we've been hearing the really amazing story of the great powerful living God who saves. So I'm going to send you back to Anne to catch up on the story now. Thanks Helen. Well in our quiz today as usual we're going to look back at what we've learned in the book of Exodus so far and in today's quiz I'd like you to draw a big tick in the air if you think what I say is right and a big cross in the air if you think it's wrong. Practice that with me. Here's the big tick and here's the cross. If you're with other members of your family, have a chat with them about what we've seen in Exodus that makes you think that your answer's right. You can pause the video if you need more time. If you don't know, just go ahead and have a guess. So here's number one. God didn't care about his people suffering in Egypt. Does that get a tick or a cross? Have a chat about it. Well, that gets a cross. God cared about his people. God saw the Israelites suffering in slavery in Egypt. He heard them cry out and he was concerned about them. He cared for them. God cares about us too. He's so awesome and yet he sees each one of us. He hears us when we pray to him and he cares for each one of us. Isn't that wonderful? Here's number two. God showed his mighty power in the book of Exodus. Does that get a tick or a cross? Well, that gets a tick. We saw over the last two weeks that God sent mighty plagues on the Egyptians, plagues that showed his power over nature, over animals, over the darkness and over people. And we're going to see today more of this power in our true Bible story today. Number three, God was in control, not Pharaoh. Does that get a tick or a cross? Well, that gets a tick. We've seen lots of ways that God was in control. One of God's promises to Abraham many years earlier was many people in his family. Pharaoh tried to stop the Israelites from growing in number, but when they left Egypt, there were 600,000 men 
plus all the women and children and plus some other people. So over a million people, God was clearly in control. And we saw in the plagues that God was in control then, knowing that Pharaoh's heart was hard and bringing all those plagues so that the Israelites and the Egyptians would all know that he is the one true Lord. Here's number four. In the book of Exodus, God was faithful to his promises. He kept his promises. Does that get a tick or a cross? Well, that gets a tick. God was faithful to his promise to Abraham of many people, and they were free now to go to the promised land, a land of blessing. God said in chapter three of the book of Exodus, that he would rescue his people from slavery, and he did rescue them. He said in chapter six of the book of Exodus, that he would redeem them, buy them back with mighty acts of judgment. And he did this using the 10 plagues. And he said in chapter 12 of the book of Exodus, that he would strike down the firstborn sons of the Egyptians, but that where he saw the blood on the doorframe, he would save the firstborn Israelites. And he did that too. Okay, here's number five. Now, here's our memory verse. Listen carefully. Does this get a tick or a cross? The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my shepherd. Well, that's true, but that's not quite what this memory verse says, is it? Say the right version with me and do the actions if you remember them. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. We've seen that God saved his people. They were saved from God's judgment by the blood of the Lamb and they were saved from slavery in Egypt. God has also saved us from his judgment and from slavery to sin by Jesus' death on the cross and if we, if we trust in him. So we too can say, let's say it again, the Lord is my strength and my song he has become my salvation. Okay, number six, last one, a tick or a cross? Our memory verse is from Exodus chapter 15, verse two. Is that right or not? Well, that gets a tick. Next week, we'll have reached chapter 15 of Exodus, so we'll see where this comes in our true Bible story. Let's say the memory verse again, the whole thing with the verse number as well. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Exodus chapter 15, verse two. Okay, now back to Helen. Right, we're going to pray. We're going to talk to our living, listening Father God and pray about our little time together this morning, okay? So do whatever you do to help you to concentrate, all right? Maybe wiggle your fingers, maybe close your eyes. Here we go. Father God, we thank you that you are the God who speaks and we pray that you would speak to us now as Anne explains your word to us. And please, would you remind us of Jesus? Amen. Over to Anne. Thanks, Helen. When Pharaoh let the Israelites go, God didn't take them on the shorter road to the promised land through the land of the Philistines, for God said, If they think they will have to fight, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. Instead, God led them around by the desert road towards the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of Egypt, ready for battle. They camped on the edge of the desert. 
By day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel by day or night. The pillars of cloud and fire showed them that God was with his people, leading them to the promised land. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and camp between Migdol and the sea. Pharaoh will think that the Israelites are lost, trapped by the desert. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will chase the Israelites. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. God's plan was to win a great victory over Pharaoh and all his army, and in this way to show his power again to the Egyptians, to show the Egyptians that he is the one true God. So the Israelites turned back and camped between Migdal and the sea. When Pharaoh was told that the people had left, he and his officials changed their minds and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost them as our slaves. So Pharaoh called his army together. He took all his chariots, including his 600 best chariots, commanded by their officers. The Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he chased the Israelites, who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians overtook the Israelites as they camped by the sea. As, the, as Pharaoh came near, the Israelites looked up and saw the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Weren't there any graves in Egypt? Did you have to bring us out to the desert to die? We told you to leave us alone and let us go on being the slaves of the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. They were quick to panic, weren't they? They had just seen the awesome things that God had done when he sent the plagues and how he had kept them safe. But they didn't really trust him, did they? They didn't really believe that he would save them from the Egyptians, so they were terrified and blamed Moses. I don't think that while they were in Egypt, they ever told Moses to leave them alone so they could go on being slaves in Egypt. Quite the opposite. They were being so badly treated that they were all very keen to leave. But they had forgotten this in their panic. Moses answered the people, Don't be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the Lord save you today. You will never see these Egyptians again after today. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Moses has changed since the time when he kept making excuses to God, hasn't he? Now Moses confidently shows his faith in God's plans. Moses understands that the Israelites can't do anything to save themselves. They are to be still and God will fight for them. Then the Lord said, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on, lift up your walking stick and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who had been travelling in front of Israel's army, moved behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them, between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and a wall of water on their left. That's amazing, isn't it? Before God parted the waters, the Israelites looked completely trapped, with Pharaoh's army on one side and the sea on the other. 
It looks like there was no way out. But God has power over all of nature and he divided the waters and gave the Israelites a way through. It must have been amazing to see it. The Egyptians chased them and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. The Lord threw them into confusion and jammed the wheels of their chariots so that it was hard to drive them. The Egyptians realised that they needed to get away from the Israelites and they realised that the Lord was fighting for the Israelites against Egypt. What God did was so awesome that the Egyptians were in no doubt that the Lord was fighting for the Israelites and against them. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and as morning came, the water flowed back and covered Pharaoh's army. Not one of them survived. That day, the Lord saved Israel from the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. The Lord had finished the job of saving the Israelites. He had saved them totally and completely. And the Israelites saw the evidence of this, just as Helen saw the evidence that what her friend said was true when her friend sent her that second photo. And when the Israelites saw the mighty power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord which means that they treated him with great respect and they put their trust in him and in his servant Moses. God showed his power at the Red Sea by saving the Israelites and by finally defeating the Egyptians. And the Israelites saw the evidence of what God had done when they saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Hundreds of years later, God showed his mighty power again as Jesus died on the cross to save us and as he raised Jesus to life again three days later. Many eyewitnesses saw the evidence of what God had done when they saw Jesus alive in the days after his resurrection. So what should be our response to this? When the Israelites saw God's mighty power against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and they put their trust in him. We have even more reason to fear the Lord and to put our trust in him because we've seen more of God's power when Jesus died on the cross for our sins and God raised him to life again. So we too should fear the Lord, treat him with great respect and put our trust in him. Now over to Craig. Thanks, Anne. Well, now is a chance for you at home to have a go at acting out today's true Bible story. So why don't you stand up and join in with me? Have a little stretch, maybe. Just get ready to join in with some actions as we're going to remind ourselves of the amazing things God did with his mighty power uh, to defeat Pharaoh and all his army. So... Here we go. The story starts with Israel leaving Egypt ready for battle. So let's march to show that we're ready for battle. Now, while Israel are on their way, Pharaoh changes his mind about letting the Israelites go and he decides to chase after them with all his horses and chariots. So let's pretend to be horses chasing after the Israelites. The Israelites are trapped and they panic. Oh no! What's going to happen to us? We're going to die in the desert. Moses, why did you bring us here? Moses tells them to stand still and that the Lord will fight for them. Now the pillar of cloud which had been leading the Israelites moved from ahead of them 
to behind them. So to show that, we're going to turn around and we're going to pretend that we can see the pillar of cloud behind us. Now, the thing about that was, was it kept the Israelite armies and the, the Israelite army and the Egyptian army separate. So they kept, God kept them separate all night. Now, God told Moses to stretch out his hand and the Lord parted the Red Sea. So let's show that the Lord parted the Red Sea. And the Israelites walked through the Red Sea as if they were walking through on land. And the Egyptians followed them. What action did we do for the Egyptians? Yes, that's right. Moses stretched out his hand and the Lord made the waters flow back. So we do this to show that the waters flow back. And the Egyptians who were in the sea were drowned. So when the Israelites saw that the Egyptians had been drowned, they feared the Lord and they put their trust in him. Brilliant. Well done. How did you get on with joining in that? Hope you enjoyed acting it out. Uh, if you wanted to, you could go back and have another go or maybe see if you can remember what order the things happened in the story. But back to Anne now. Thanks, Craig. And thank you to Nathan, Tim, Sam and Naomi for our drama. Well, this week's true Bible story is in Exodus chapter 13, beginning at verse 17, all the way through to the end of Exodus chapter 14. Do get your Bible now and look up the verses you need for the worksheet. And join us next week to find out what happens next in our true Bible story.